God wants to use you and you want to be used by God. So where do you go from there? I want to talk to you about how to begin doing something for God. It's a very simple thing that you need to do, but it's not easy. Stephen Moctezuma is here with me as usual. He's going to lead you in some anointed worship, and then we're going to get right into this challenging message. Here is Stephen Moctezuma. I surrender to you Everything I give to you I surrender to you Everything I give to you Withholding nothing Withholding nothing Withholding nothing Withholding nothing, withholding nothing. I surrender surrender all to you everything I give to you and I surrender all to you everything I give to you with hope I want to read to you a portion of scripture found in Matthew chapter 25. We're going to read verses 14 through 30. It's a parable, and I want you to hear this. The scripture says, Again, the kingdom of heaven can be illustrated by the story of a man going on a long trip. He called together his servants and entrusted his money to them while he was gone. He gave five bags of silver to one, two bags of silver to another, and one bag of silver to the last dividing it in proportion to their abilities. He then left on his trip. The servant who received the five bags of silver began to invest the money and earn five more. The servant with two bags of silver also went to work and earned two more. But the servant who received the one bag of silver dug a hole in the ground and hid the master's money. After a long time, their master returned from his trip and called them to give an account of how they had used his money. The servant to whom he had entrusted the five bags of silver came forward with five more and said, Master, you gave me five bags of silver to invest, and I have earned five more. 
The master was full of praise. Well done, my good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in handling this small amount, so now I will give you many more responsibilities. Let's celebrate together. The servant who had received the two bags of silver came forward and said, Master, you gave me two bags of silver to invest, and I have earned two more. The master said, Well done, my good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in handling this small amount, so now I will give you many more responsibilities. Let's celebrate together. Then the servant with the one bag of silver came and said, Master, I knew you were a harsh man, harvesting crops you didn't plant and gathering crops you didn't cultivate. I was afraid I would lose your money, so I hid it in the earth. Look, here is your money back. But the master replied, You wicked and lazy servant, if you knew I harvested crops I didn't plant and gathered crops I didn't cultivate, why didn't you deposit my money in the bank? At least I could have gotten some interest on it. Then he ordered, Take the money from this servant and give it to the one with ten bags of silver. To those who use well what they are given, even more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who do nothing, even what little they have will be taken away. Now throw this useless servant into outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So here we see a parable, and I believe that this is a parable of the final judgment, or the Lord giving to people lives that they are to steward. But from this parable, we can also glean basic principled truths about the Lord. For one thing, we see that the Lord left, and you'll notice that He left without giving to them specific instructions what they were to do. Also, you'll notice about the Lord that He gave to each servant in proportion to their own abilities. So, each one of us is given something. Now, you may say, I don't feel I have any gifts. I don't feel I have anything specific that one could pinpoint to say that right there could be used for the glory of God. But you definitely have time. You definitely have energy. You definitely have a voice. You definitely have some influence, whether it be big or small. So the question is not, have I been given anything? The question is, how much have I been given? And the follow-up to that would be, what do I do with what I have been given? So the Lord has given something to you, whether you believe that or not. In fact, some people say, I haven't been given anything by God because they're hiding in fear and they don't want to step out in faith. So they'd rather remain inactive and comfortable so they tell themselves, God hasn't given me anything. But the truth is that God does not sympathize with our excuses necessarily. Fear and shyness and lack of confidence in self is not collectively an excuse to deny the call of God on your life. You have been called by God. So He gives in proportion to your abilities. He holds you accountable to what you know, to what you are aware of, and based upon what you know, based upon what you've been given, God will measure you against that standard. Now, the Bible tells us that the master left and he did not give any instructions to the servants. This tells me that God has given you abilities in proportion to each individual, and then he trusts that you will choose what to do with those gifts. Now, I believe that God does place specific calls on people's lives. I believe that God has destined you for something, but I don't believe that the call of God is held hostage to fragile specifics. In other words, I don't believe that if you make one wrong decision, that everything is derailed and that therefore you miss the call of God. That, well, I wasn't supposed to take that class, but I took that class. Or I wasn't supposed to go to that church, but I went to that church. Or I wasn't supposed to take that job, but I took that job. Or I wasn't supposed to marry this person, but I married this person. I don't believe that the call of God gets removed from your life based upon those kinds of decisions that maybe you feel might have derailed the call. In fact, the Bible tells us that the gifts and the calling of God are without repentance. They are irrevocable. They cannot be removed from you. So, 
Rather than be like that wicked and lazy servant who in fear, not knowing what to do, hid what the Lord had deposited with him, you need to be one who says, I'm going to do something for God. So here's the key. How do you start? Where do you begin? Because a lot of people will look at ministries and they'll say, well, they have this, they have a TV ministry, they have staff members, they have speaking abilities, they have finance, and they start to list all of the things that ministries have. And then they say, well, therefore I can't do it because I have none of those things. But do you realize that these things begin to be, they're accumulated over time. They're not given all in one moment. What God does is gives you in proportion to your ability. He'll give you something that you can use, whether that be a talent, whether that be a passion, whether that be just some free time that you might have, God will give you something. So maybe God has given you some free time. Are you investing that free time in the Word? Are you investing that free time in worship and in prayer and in servant ministry? Are you investing that time in something that will grow you spiritually? Well, if you are, then you're using that time, that treasure, and you're using it to invest the master's resources. So you take the time he's given you and you use it wisely. Some of you, maybe God has given you some resources. Maybe God has given you some connections. Maybe God has given you some specific talents that you are very confident in. Whatever God has given to you, he'll give it to you. He'll place it in your hands and you hold it. And once you have it, he watches you. And he looks to see what you will do with what he has given to you. And if you steward well the things that God has given to you, then God will begin to bless you with more. And as he begins to bless you with more, you have more to invest and to use. So the simple instruction here, just do something. Just take a step of faith. Just go. Stop waiting around and being afraid and saying, Lord, I'm afraid I might miss the call. Some of us are so afraid of missing the call of God that we settle for doing nothing instead. Some of us are so obsessed with the details that we miss the destiny. And if we are obsessed with those details, if we are paranoid about missing something that God may have given to us or missing something that God may have instructed us to do, then we will find ourselves in the place of inactivity. And inactivity has no power. You may say, well, it's a perfectly legitimate excuse to not want to move because God might not want me to. And I understand that we mustn't go all the way to the extreme of presumption. We must neither be presumptuous or inactive. We have to have that balance of faith where we're taking steps and listening for the guidance of the Lord. Presumption isn't taking a step with uncertainty because you'll often take steps with uncertainty. Presumption is taking steps without consulting the Lord. Now, some of us will consult the Lord. We don't hear anything. We consult the Lord. We don't hear anything. So what we do in faith is we begin to take steps, steps that begin to further the call of God on your life, steps that begin to grow the ministry, steps that begin to develop your gifts. But for those of you who are afraid of taking that step because you might miss something or because God might get angry with you, I don't think he will. I want to give you this encouragement. My philosophy or my perspective is this. I don't trust myself. You may say, Brother David, you seem like such a nice guy. Look, I'll tell you, I am a nice guy, but I'm just, I'm just like you. I'm human. I have my flaws. So I can't trust my own judgment sometimes. I have to rely on the Word. So when I take a step of faith, I'm not trusting in my judgment. I'm not trusting in my prayer life. I'm not even trusting in my ability to hear God. No, I'm not trusting in my ability to hear God. I'm trusting in God's ability to speak to me. And it is that trust in God's ability to speak to me that keeps me on track so that when I feel I have taken a wrong turn or made a wrong move, I trust that the Lord himself will be there to guide me back. I trust that when I don't know what to do, I take simple steps of faith and I say, Lord, it's in your hands. It's in your hands and all is well. It's in your hands and everything will work out. And so we have to eliminate from ourselves, from our thinking, 
those excuses like this servant. So those who do well with what they have been given, more will be given to them. But those who don't steward well, they go nowhere. This isn't to say that God will permanently remove something from you. You may lose influence because you're not speaking. You may lose traction because you're not moving. And you may lose passion because you're not acting. If you will step out, here is my challenge to you. Step out in faith and do something for God. Between those who will listen to this on the podcast and those who will watch this uh, lesson on YouTube and those who will, there's all sorts of ways this message gets put out. There are thousands, there are tens of thousands of people who receive this message. Imagine what would happen if those who hear this message would say within themselves, I'm going to do something for God. And just because you don't have everything right now to do everything that's in your heart doesn't mean that you can't do something right now. Do what is before you and trust promotion and growth to come from the Lord. But you have to step out and do something. I want to see a generation rise. I want to see a generation committed to the Lord's will and His work. I want to see a generation of Jesus-loving, Spirit-filled, faith-filled believers step out in the anointing, step out in miracles, and you are a part of that. So my challenge to you, step out and do something for God. Don't wait, don't delay, stop making excuses. Some of you have been praying, God, send me a sign. Here, take this as your sign. Go and do something for God. It doesn't have to be immediately this big platform of influence. It doesn't have to immediately develop into everything that you see in your head, but it starts with where you are now. It starts what's before you with what's before you now. Well, that is it for the lesson. I want to pray with you now. And I want to ask the Lord to stir within you that passion and that faith to do something now. Come on, receive this prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for that one receiving this prayer, Lord. And I ask, Lord, that you would begin to stir the anointing, stir the gifts, and pour out your spirit. I thank you, Father, that you are raising a remnant of spirit-filled believers will shake this world with the gospel. And I pray you shake this world for your glory, Lord. In Jesus' name. I want you to say it because you agree. Say, Amen. You know what excites me? What excites me is I have no idea who I'm talking to right now. You see, I was 11 years old, or between 11, because I watched Christian television from 11 to 14. Between the ages of 11 and 14, I was just heavily influenced by many ministries. And I was just watching a minister on TV when I was influenced to enter the ministry. Who knows who's watching? Maybe watching right now is the next Billy Graham. If I could just convince you to step out in faith, who knows who I'm talking to? If I could just influence one to step out and reach more than I ever could, I think this will all have been worth it. Well, that is it for the lesson. I want to welcome now the new members of Spirit Church. There you are up on the screen. We love you and we are praying for you. I always say that because I always mean it and I really do mean that. We, are, we love you and we are praying for you. And if you'd like information on how you can join Spirit Church, remember it's free. Use the information at the bottom of the screen. And remember that when you sign up for Spirit Church, you get a weekly resource. I send you a fresh teaching on a weekly basis that will stir your faith, challenge you, grow your knowledge in the Word of God. And again, it's free. So sign up now. You receive that weekly email, and you can actually reply to that email for prayer support from our ministry staff. And when you sign up to join Spirit Church, you're joining over 3,000 members from all around the world. I believe 30 different countries. I believe it's way above that now, but I know it's at least 30 countries represented by those 3,000 people. So do that. I want to read your comments now. And these comments are actually coming from Stephen Moctezuma's worship playlist. So 
These are the things that people are saying about Stephen Moctezuma's worship ministry. The first commenter writes, Wow, there's just something unexplainable about your voice, Stephen. Be blessed always. Tina Marie writes, Beautiful. Thank you, Stephen and Nick, for blessing us with anointed worship. May the Lord pour His blessings upon you both and Spirit Church. To God be the glory. Grace writes, Beautiful and very anointed voice. God bless you. Melanie Marquez writes, I'm thankful to be blessed by Stephen's ministry. And yes, God, I stand in awe of you. And the final commenter, this is actually a comment on his song, his cover of Breathe. Listening to this made me cry. I have been praying and will continue to pray. I feel this song in my heart and soul. So if you haven't checked out his playlist yet, be sure to do that. And you know, Stephen Moctezuma's ministry is one of the many ministries that are being funded through your monthly support and one-time donations. Our goal is simple. We want to win souls and we want to build the believer. And we do that through simple means, media and events. Help us do more media and in higher quality and help us do more events in more locations by becoming a monthly supporter today. While we appreciate one-time gifts, of any amount, sometimes people sell a thousand, sometimes people give 500, sometimes people give a hundred. We appreciate the one-time gifts and we appreciate the partnership of any amount. Some people partner at a hundred, some people partner at 50, some at 10, some at five, some at 15. Whatever you can do, do it today, whether it be one time or monthly. But for those who partner at $30 or more, I will send you a copy of either Carriers of the Glory, 25 Truths About Demons and Spiritual Warfare, and now, Encountering the Holy Spirit in every book of the Bible. I don't sign these books except for those who partner with us on a monthly basis. You can't get them signed at Amazon. You can't get them signed on our ministry website. They're only signed for our partners. So you'll get a selection of one of these three books. I'm very happy to announce that this is now in the selection. So sign up today. Don't wait on that. We need your support. I need your help. Help me take the gospel all around the world. Help me to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit. You can do that by using the link below me. You can use that URL. Or if you're watching this on the app, wait for the video to go away. And then there will be a link that says partner with David that you can click. If you're watching this on YouTube, wait until the end of the video. A red button will appear. You can click that. It'll take you right to where you can partner. If you're watching this anywhere else, again, use the information at the bottom of the screen. I really do appreciate your help. Well, that is it for this edition of Spirit Church. Until next time, remember, nothing is impossible with God. Thank you for watching Encounter TV. Don't forget to subscribe. Also, help me win souls by spreading the gospel through events and media. Make a one-time donation or become a monthly supporter by clicking on the donate link now.